in the article I wrote that, you know, um, uh, the, the, you know, we're doing stuff military to military. The president may not have known, but there's a lot of stuff he doesn't know about. So that's the way they got around the issue. And they began to help it and help Bashar. Not only that, it was very much a morale builder for the Syrian army to know that uh, they were getting very high level intelligence. So <clears throat> I don't know how history is going to judge this, um, the, uh, as, as you can gather. Stories like this uh, in the mainstream press don't, don't get copied. Um, but it doesn't matter because there's the Internet. You know, there's guys like you <laughs> and, and uh, uh, all sorts of other people around the world that pay more attention than often the major papers here. You know, I worked for the New York Times for eight or nine years during Watergate. and I won a lot of prizes in Vietnam and uh, um, certainly uh, uh, the Nixon years a lot. And uh, one of the things, you know, is there's not many pa- reporters at a good newspaper who have the kind of, you know, I, I, there's nothing special. I have, I have friends that I know. A lot, most of the good guys at the major papers have somebody. And when you're at that level, where you're, you know, you're, you've got access and you're covering the Pentagon or the State Department or the White House, the last thing you want to do, I know this makes, sounds almost silly, the last thing you want to do is chase somebody else's story. You just don't want to do it. So when somebody has me bops along and writes a story that says something, the only thing the editor can do is ask one of the good reporters to do it. And what they want to do is figure out some way to get this, out, you know, turf this, get this off their desk. So it doesn't really get happened. It doesn't happen with the papers. And I understand it because I'm sure I did the same thing. We're all, you know, we all love what we do and we're more interested in ourselves than anybody else. That's one of the things about my business that's sort of wacky. And I just want to experience this journey with you. I want our children to grow up together and their children and their children to have a future that goes to the stars and beyond. And we can do this. I just want to win. I want humanity to succeed. And I'm so sick of people that don't like humanity. Humanity. So I get wound up because it's fight and flight, and there's nowhere to run. I'm like a raccoon in the garage. Somebody's about to kill, man. I don't have a choice. I'm a fight. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in stuff for for a couple years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, let's explain. I mean, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime, and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> I feel like this all the time trying to politically awaken people that they're being lied to, that there's an agenda. It's not left or right. It's, hey, there's mind control going on. The signals broadcast 24 hours a day through all this media. Just become aware of it, and they'll say, there's nothing going on. And I want to say, put on these glasses or start chewing concrete. <laughs> have taken the hearts and minds of our leaders. They have recruited the rich and the powerful, and they have blinded us to the truth. The question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. An estimated 50 to 70 million Americans suffer from a sleep disorder or sleep deprivation. Outside the limit of our sight, feeding off us, perched on top of us from birth to death, are our owners. Latest census numbers prove the United States has the biggest gap between rich and poor compared to all westernized countries today. Our projections show that by the year 2025, not only America, but the entire planet will be under the protection and the dominion of this power alliance. The gains have been substantial, both for ourselves and for you, the human power elite. <laughs> but for the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened. That's a total new reality. I've got one that can see. We can't be the only ones who can see. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's got at the root of all our problems. It's a new morning in America. Fresh, vital. The old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. We're optimistic as to what becomes of it all. It really boils down to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> and who are you, little fella? You will never see it coming. And I'm predicting the first guy who uses a Second Amendment weapon to bring a drone down that's been hovering over his house is going to be a folk hero in this country. Nice. There is a signal broadcast every second of every day through our television sets. I'm just trying to warn you folks, the television is a giant LED weapon system. It's so advanced. They got a monkey farm in Bastrop, folks. They do all sorts of testing on great apes, rhesus monkeys, the whole nine yards. And they go, oh, you didn't see this, and punch a button, and it'd be hundreds of monkeys with wires in their brains with television sets brainwashing them. All I ever have to do is be famous. People watch me. 
And they love me. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. Now, I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. Do it to your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. The real men of the world have to stand up and say, I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> Time to take a stand, boys. You know what? You got a little courage. Stand up for yourself. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones, coming to you live from the front lines. I think the jury's out on whether this was completely staged or not. I don't think it was uh, from the uh, evidence we have mounting. There is kind of a leftist attempt to take over the, quote, conspiracy movement. That just means questioning movement. And to basically brand any type of Islamic misbehavior as a conspiracy theory. No, it's a fact that ISIS has been murdering hundreds of thousands of people, along with al-Nusra and al-Qaeda, same group, and our government's been supporting it. That's the real conspiracy, and the real conspiracy is opening the borders and bringing them in to do it, which I just think shows the incredible arrogance. They don't care if ISIS kills people. They'll just take more of our rights, and they think the public's so dumb that the politicians won't be held accountable. But, Paul, there's real anger taking place right now, and I think the establishment has miscalculated I think Merkel's in trouble. Uh, I think the French president's in trouble. No matter how much patriotic garbage they involve themselves in, I think you should talk to folks on the street, a lot of them speak English there, and ask, you know, is your government responsible for opening the borders? Uh, I mean, your French president closing them now just for, you know, you know, a few months or whatever, that's too little too late. Well, yeah, and Hollande, of course, is massively unpopular anyway because he's basically wrecked the economy. So he's going to be out in the next election. And again, as I said yesterday, uh, Marine Le Pen is going to win the first round. She's going to do well in the regional elections coming up here, but they've got a national election in 2017. She's almost certain to win the first round. Then the establishment's going to come in and say that this is going to represent a bigger threat than, you know, Islamic radicalization, because she's the only one really in France who is calling for the radical extremist mosque to be shut down, who is calling for the migrant wave to be turned back. And she's got huge and growing support here in France because she distanced herself from her, her father, who was seen as more right-wing, more radical. So they're starting to attract more moderate support. There's the Pegida movement in Germany, which is starting to attract more, quote, moderate support. So, you know, a conservative wave is sweeping Europe. It has been for the past year, 18 months. And that's what the political elite, the establishment, are terrified of. Popping in is Joe Biggs, who's been filing prolific reports from on the ground in Paris, France, with his unique military perspective, being a combat veteran staff sergeant of Iraq and Afghanistan, multiple Purple Hearts, dealing with these very same types of folks. Uh, we do now know about drills they were having. That's being reported by Global Research. That's just general drills. Uh, we also know that uh, the CIA head was there the day of the event, but does that mean a pure false flag? Why does it matter? They brought them in to begin with, so the government's to blame regardless. Debate over. Uh, Joe Biggs. Yeah, so I don't believe that it's a false uh, flag attack whatsoever. You know, like Paul said earlier, this has been building up to where it is now. You know, you could see this coming from a mile away. And just like in a fight, Alex, what do you do? You find a person's weak spot and you continue to hit that spot. You know, Paris is pretty much a very weak spot when you look at it all around. So it's easy for these guys to carry out these attacks in this area. And that's why I think they'll continue. I mean, you have the prime, man uh, prime minister of France coming out today saying to the people to stay vigilant that they think that there'll be another attack. And then you also have the president of France coming out saying that the, these acts. Feed breaking up to Joe Biggs. He's going to come back in a moment. Uh, hold on, Joe. We'll come back to you in just a second. And I tend to agree with him. Again, there's real terrorism, folks. But still, it doesn't matter. Are criminal governments allowed it in? And it's not the government low level's fault, it's the high level leaders. Joe, you're back. Yes, I agree. I mean, definitely there's a, a lot of people up top having a, a part in what's going on. But at the same time, you know, if, if, if people had the ability to protect themselves, a lot of these things wouldn't happen. And it just seems like the government's out there, they don't want that to happen. They want to let the borders wide open. And the fact that you want to come out and call that racist or Islamophobic, it's completely mind blowing. I don't understand how you can come to that conclusion. 
you know, the fact that these attacks keep happening. And like Paul said, you don't see a large uh, amount of these uh, Muslims are out here getting beat up or anything like that. But you're seeing a lot of attacks from these Islamic terrorist groups. But yet when you call them out on it, you're Islamophobic.